the weekend I have been doing a little bit of research on my diesel engine. It's a Barris Shire, 50 horsepower. It's a vertical inline diesel engine. It has four cylinders. It's a 2.2 litre, or to be accurate, 2.19 litres, and weighs 284 kilograms. So looking on the data, um, for engine servicing, because that's one of the things that I am mindful of is to how often I need to change, you know, do a service of the engine. Now after the first 50 hours for the engine itself, you need to do an engine oil change. And after the first 25 hours for the gearbox, ooh, didn't know that. However, thereafter, 350 hours, or 12 months. That's not bad, is it? So that's almost double what I thought it was going to be. That's, well, that's a, that's a bit of a game changer, to be fair. So primary fuel filter, after the first 50 hours service, and then 350 hours after that, or 12 months. Engine fuel filter, 700 hours, or 12 months. 700 hours. So after every double oil change, you change fuel filter. Air filter element, 700 hours, or every other service, or, 12, or 24 months. Belts as required, or hoses as required, and key switch, lubricated by putting a bit of WD-40 in the key slotty thing, after 150 hours or, or 12 months. Do you know what, I kind of think, as far as looking after the engine, as long as I do the lubrication, as long as I look after it, tweak the bits I need to tweak, I'm impressed. I. So there we go, there's the bilge pump. There's a gap down there, same on the other side. So if any water floods in here, bilge pump hopefully will pump it out. That is the Webasto heater. Nicely put on, on the back of some hex board. And I assume all of that is to do with gas and fuel and all that sort of stuff. Notice the propeller had four blades. Now every other propeller I've seen, whether it been on YouTube or, or I actually visited the uh, Midland Chandlery website, and they only have three bladed propellers on there. But I've got four blades. So I kind of wanted to know why. What's the difference between a three bladed propeller and a four bladed propeller? I went on some various forums on the, you know, the forums of the canal world and all that sort of stuff. It became a little bit of a willy-waving exercise. There was various people that knew an awful lot about stuff and then they became really in-depth and really, stuff that I then confused me, I didn't really understand. Antenna theory, it's a dark art. And propellers are a dark art and if you make it really complex and no one understands it, but if you keep it simple, like I'm hoping to do today with the propeller, then people generally understand. I'll read this bit. If you look at a propeller from behind and visualize a circle that the blade tips would draw, you will see that a blade of a three blade prop covers about 50 to 55% of the circle. This is called diameter area ratio or DAR. You can add thrust within this drive circle by increasing the percent to say 60 or 65% by adding a fourth blade. Thrust is something I learned about 18 years ago. What's thrust? Ah, he said. If you were to have a pound of sugar and sat on a wheelie chair and then thrust that sugar away from you, 
that movement on the wheelie chair will be equal to a pound of thrust. Oh, okay. Now, very simple layman's terms, but I kind of understood it, and I still understand it 18 years later. When you look at a four blade prop, you will notice that more of this area is covered because of the extra blade. That means more push contact with the water. Okay, get it. Now, Beta Marine, because I looked on their website, has many years of experience learning um, and teaching about propellers, but they say they only give general guidance as propellers is a very complex subject with many variables and can affect different vessels' performances and if an optimum theoretical hull speed is required then you need to get a consultant on this matter. Dimensions. Propellers are measured with two dimensions. One is the actual diameter which is from the centre of the propeller to the edge, to the edge of that blade uh, and then you double it so that's half the diameter anyway get the point. And then the other half, or the other measurement, is known as the pitch. If that propeller was to spin, the distance the boat moves through one rotation of the spin is called the pitch. So on this, this is an 18 by 10. So 18 inch diameter and 10 inches forward from one spin of the propeller. There are often physical limitations or restrictions imposed on the propeller. This would frequently be the diameter due to the space limitations between the position of the propeller's shaft, this thing here, and the underside of the hull, up there. So the minimum clearance between the tip of the propeller and the underside of the hull should be greater than 10% than the propeller's overall diameter. So the overall diameter is 18 inches. 10% of 18 is 1.8. Tape measure. So I'm looking for 1.8 inches. I've got three. Gift. Generally a large diameter propeller rotating slowly is more efficient in converting available power and torque into thrust than a small one rotating faster. Theoretically, fewer blades provide a more efficient propeller. Okay. In contrast, more blades make for a smoother running with less vibration. With modern propeller designs, the construction methods diameter, pitch and RPM revs per minute are no longer the only governing factors. Increasingly shape is also important. Okay. For optimum performance, fuel economy, it is the shape and cross section of the blades that are the crucial difference. Cobbs.
beating heart the boat's gone in now quite interesting watching it happen and that do you know what that crane driver he's got the Midas touch it's like the slightest of movement throughout the time and, and this is the third time I've seen a boat move first time I've seen an engine put in and he's just very very good at doing what he does so there we've got the air filter primary fuel filter in there well that is the secondary fuel filter that's the 12 volt 50 amp alternator and that one is a 12 volt 240 amp alternator and that's a dual thermostat housing thing there's the dipstick there for checking the oil and this little pumpy thing is for pumping the oil out and that pumpy thing there is for the gearbox. <laughs> I've come inside the boat because Mark's painting the, the roof. And um, for me to have been un under the boat by the propeller would have meant I would have been covered in, ooh, in the type of paint that Mark's painting the boat with. So, you'll notice Ben's at the back there doing some wiggly amps wiring the battery in the battery's in by the way but he's doing some wiring stuff and then we've got dom outside chops it off so you can hear his dulcet tones in the background so propellers in choosing this propeller the following criteria was considered engine power and speed that's matched the propeller design engine efficiency water flow to the propeller as created by the hull or the swim reduction in top speed provides better shipping handling or better boat handling capabilities propeller strength and required power versus boat displacement a propeller with a high pitch i.e the amount of distance the boat will travel through one revolution of of the propeller will move your boat faster at your engine's maximum rpm but it will be slow in acceleration or the time it takes to reach your high speed big pitch covers distance quicker right got it conversely if you choose a propeller with a low pitch small distance covered per revolution it might help you develop more power in acceleration but you'll have a lower overall top speed okay that takes a little bit of time for my head to to understand that so last consideration is not to choose a propeller that is either too big in diameter or too high in pitch because this will prevent your engine from getting up to its maximum recommended RPM. I read somewhere on one of those sites that there's something called an overpropped or an underpropped propeller. And the way to work that out is if you have got your engine at full RPM, if it gets the full RPM, then you've got about the right propeller. If it can't get, if your engine can't get to its maximum revs per minute, then it's overpropped or underpropped. And if it gets there too quickly, then it's underpropped or overpropped. I think that's a, a very Janet and John version of looking at it, which is right for me. So in summary, four blades provide more surface area than three blades therefore have more effect but increases drag and hence a slight reduction in top speed okay 
The increase in surface area means that when wishing to slow down, the propeller will bite quicker and take the forward momentum or way than the three bladed screw. You can always increase speed, but you may not be able to reduce speed quickly. Ah, oh, good bit of advice that. I've just come out of the boat uh, because we had to stay in there for 15 minutes whilst the the spray settled. <laughs> Massive smile on my face. It just, I mean, one coat and the handrail's been done. So that, that has got three coats. So one coat on the top. It's looking amazing. Looking amazing. I'm just... doors on the kitchen now they make such a difference the as you come down from the top of the boat from the back of the boat into the kitchen galley just the painting starting to happen Mark has put the handrail he's done the handrail first and that's had three coats of whatever color that is and today he rubs down the roof and he's put the first coat of on the roof and it, it just I'm so pleased with the outcome of the color because it's always a little bit of a risk is it going to look right everything about it it just looks fantastic the internal gubbins in the galley starting to get that homely sort of look it's still a little bit clinical but by the time I've got a few pictures up there and, and put the homely touches in there, I'm sure it's gonna look absolutely fantastic. And I think that's about it. Thanks for watching, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, and it's Lithium Batteries next one.